Because this video was originally produced prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, safety protocols are not always represented in the images used. Please check the Emory Decatur Hospital website and the Joint Solutions Center webpage for the latest details. Hello, I'm Karen for Emory Decatur Hospital's award-winning Joint Solutions Center, where you'll be having your joint replacement surgery. We want you to have the best possible outcome for your surgery and rehabilitation. So I'm gonna carefully explain how our program works and do my best to help you prepare for your time both in and out of the hospital after surgery. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. You can be comfortable knowing that we'll assign a highly skilled and dedicated rehabilitation team to you. That includes a physical therapist to help with movement and strength, and an occupational therapist to get you back doing your daily living tasks. This team has six major goals for you after surgery, and with their help, at the end of your stay with us, you should be able to get in and out of bed independently, get on and off a chair and toilet safely by yourself, walk an appropriate functional distance with your assistive device, be able to dress yourself with minimal assistance, and be able to go up and down stairs or curbs properly and safely. And most importantly, return to the comforts of your own home and back to a more active, healthy lifestyle as safely and quickly as possible. The therapists and nursing staff will talk to you about any specific precautions you need to be aware of with your joint replacement. You'll also be getting a guidebook that includes a lot of the information I'm sharing, so get your questions ready for our team. We're glad you chose our center for your joint replacement surgery. The Joint Solutions Center is a specialized program within Emory Decatur Hospital on North Decatur Road. Our unit has 25 private patient rooms exclusive to orthopedic joint replacement patients. We hope you'll find the atmosphere more relaxing than that of a typical hospital setting. Our patients dress comfortably in their own clothes after surgery, and the food is really good. Our specialized staff loves what we do, and we look forward to serving you. While you're here, you'll be involved in individualized treatment sessions. Be on the lookout as we track your distances walked on our Georgia Sightseers board. The best thing about our program? In most cases, you're back to the comforts of your own home quickly and safely, and in many cases, within the same day as your surgery. Most patients return to physical activities and even sports within two to three months. We take pride in our educational approach and are here to answer any question or concern that you or your loved ones have. Now let's get you prepared for surgery. Try your best to make healthy choices in the weeks and days leading up to your surgery. Eat a healthy diet and stay away from fast and fried foods as much as possible. Healthy proteins, carbohydrates, and more fruits and vegetables will help your body maintain proper glucose levels. Drink a lot of water and avoid sodas and extra caffeine so that your body will be well hydrated before surgery. This will reduce side effects from anesthesia and pain medications. Your physician or pre-op testing nurses will talk to you about what medications you should continue taking or possibly stop taking leading up to your special day. If you have any questions or doubts regarding your medications, be sure to call your surgeon's office. We ask that you enlist a care partner who will assist in your recovery as you return home after surgery. You'll want to arrange advanced transportation home from the hospital for when you're discharged and ensure your care partner is at the ready. They will help with general support, guidance, and most of all, encouragement. Remember, this is major surgery and you will need help. We recommend that you also have a few ready-to-eat meals available to make those first few days home more comfortable. Now is also the time to begin preparing your home for your return from the hospital. A few simple things you can do now will make your arrival easier. 
you will need extra room to navigate with your walker through your home. Get someone to help you move furniture if needed, remove throw rugs that could be a tripping hazard, and be wary of small objects or even pets that could cause a fall. Consider adding a firm pillow to low sitting areas and even preparing a main level sleeping room if one is available for the first week or so. If you have to navigate stairs, ensure that the handrails are securely fastened to the wall before surgery and use those when you get home. Don't forget about the bathroom either. Non-slip, rubber-backed mats near the shower or tub are good, and a tub bench or shower chair will really help. Handheld shower heads and a long-handled sponge will make bathing easier. The lower height of a standard toilet can make getting off and on more difficult, so consider getting a commode chair with arm handles to push up from, or an elevated toilet seat. Now is the time to think about whether you need to make any adjustments to your home. As you get close to your surgery day and start packing, we recommend you pack one to two sets of comfortable, loose-fitting clothes. Slip-on shoes with rubber non-slip soles are a good idea too, and will provide non-slip hospital socks as well. If you have important paperwork, such as a living will, remember to pack a copy of that for the registration department. Be sure to pack your incentive spirometer, which you'll get during your pre-op testing day and you'll be using frequently to help prevent any fluid buildup in your lungs. Please bring a list of any medications you routinely take so the hospital pharmacy can fill them if needed. If you have any special equipment such as a CPAP machine, eyeglasses, etc., pack those too. If you already have a walker, no need to bring it to the hospital, but make sure you have it ready for your arrival back home. All patients will be using a walker here in the hospital, and one will be ordered for home use if needed. Please leave large amounts of cash and jewelry and your regular medications at home unless advised differently by your physician. We don't want to take a chance that something goes missing, and you can be comfortable knowing that our pharmacy will fill any needed medications. Now, let's move on to what you'll need to do just before your actual surgery. It's really important to remember that you're not to eat or drink anything after midnight the night before your surgery. The only exception is a small sip of water for any medications you're instructed to take. And refrain from smoking or tobacco use at least 24 hours prior to the surgery. Since you may not fully bathe again until your incision is completely healed, please take a thorough shower or bath before you come to the hospital. The night before surgery, it's a good idea to review your blue joint replacement guidebook. Be sure everything is packed, try to relax, and get a good night's rest. On the day of your surgery, remember to bring with you only the medication your surgeon or the nursing staff advised you to take. Arrive at the registration desk in the Dr. Bobby Bailey Surgery Center two hours prior to your scheduled surgery time. This is the same place you went during your pre-op testing and registration. Surgery itself will last about 60 to 90 minutes, but the entire procedure is closer to three to four hours, including recovery time. Once you've transferred from the OR, you'll spend one to two hours being monitored in our PACU recovery unit. From there, you will be handed over to our 2200 unit, home of the Joint Solutions Center. You'll get a nurse assessment, an IV for pain, and soon start on a liquid diet. You may be temporarily using low-level oxygen through a nasal cannula, as well as a catheter to help drain your bladder. While you're in your bed, we will place pneumatic foot pumps on your feet to improve lower extremity blood flow and avoid blood clots. Some patients may have a drain from the incision. After surgery, you'll be encouraged to get up, move around, and participate in various therapies. If you spend the night in the hospital, the 5 a.m. wake up will come early, so you can get any blood work done that will be useful during the doctor's visit with you a bit later in the morning. We'll get you cleaned up, changed, and into your recliner by 7 a.m. And then you'll have a one-on-one -on -one therapy session in your room with your assigned physical therapist, which usually includes some walking. It's hard to believe you'll be up performing some basic strengthening exercises for your road to recovery, but you will. 
Your occupational therapist will also work with you during the day with tasks like bathing, dressing, getting on and off chairs, and out of the car, etc. Later, you may be asked to try a little more walking with our therapy staff, or you'll have some relaxation time before 4.30 p.m. dinner. Rest assured that our staff will be checking on you hourly throughout your stay here. Early mobility is key to the success of your surgery, and of course, we will ensure that you're safe as you move about. If you are a total knee replacement patient, you will have a continuous passive motion or CPM device placed on your leg while in the recovery unit. It will slowly move your foot back and forth to start early range of motion with your knee. You will use this device four to six hours a day while in your bed at the hospital. All of our beds are equipped with a hand trapeze to make that easier. The majority of your time here will be spent in your orthopedic recliner, sitting upright or in a slightly reclined position to avoid fluid buildup in your lungs. If possible, we also want you to eat all of your meals in the chair. Most hip replacement patients will use a foam hip abduction pillow between their legs for safety while in bed. This avoids dislocation or injury to your new surgically repaired hip while you sleep. You'll be using cold packs while in the hospital, and some surgeons will order special cold therapy for use at home. Your nursing staff will continue to monitor you and check in every hour on your first day. Each time we enter the room, we'll be checking on the four P's, pain, potty, position, and possessions. We'll be addressing any restroom needs, making you comfortable in your chair or bed, and ensuring you have anything you may need within reach. You should expect some level of pain or discomfort from this major surgery. Normal side effects of the anesthesia and medications can be nausea, lightheadedness, or constipation. Please remember it's up to you to let the nurses know how you feel and ask for pain medication when you need it. You'll rate your pain on a scale from 0 to 10, with 10 being the worst. Don't let your pain get too severe before requesting medication. It's much easier to manage lower levels of pain than to try and bring down severe pain. If you should require an additional stay, your post-op day two will include much of the same routine as day one, with more individualized therapy treatments as needed. You'll be getting discharge instructions covering things like changing your dressing and preventing any possible complications. Discharge from the hospital is typically mid to late afternoon when you're medically and functionally safe to return home. Due to the nature of the surgery, we do want to mention the rare but possible complications. Your active participation in preventive measures can address most of them. One is blood clots, which can be prevented by regular walking and use of your compression device and foot pumps. A second possible complication is fluid buildup in the lungs. So take 10 big inhalations on your incentive spirometer every hour that you're awake to keep your lungs good and clear. And lower extremity swelling is typical following your surgery. And ice packs, as well as anti-inflammatory medication will help the tools to prevent the fourth possible complication, infection, include hand sanitizing, protective barriers, frequent dressing checks, and certain medications. We ask that you also participate in active infection prevention. During discharge planning, we'll work hard as a collaborative team to make sure you have everything you need to be ready to go home. Our rehab and nursing team, along with your surgeon, will ensure that you're safe to return home. The Joint Solution Center has a case manager assigned to each of our patients. He or she will help coordinate any special assistance that's needed once you're home. Before you leave, make sure you have any special equipment such as your walker or bedside commode. Most of our physicians order physical therapy after discharge to continue your recovery which will be coordinated by your case manager. Typically, a therapist comes to your home two to three times a week for two weeks. After a follow-up visit, your surgeon may add outpatient physical therapy for you to work on more advanced strengthening, range of motion, and mobility. 
Some patients may need temporary inpatient rehab or a skilled nursing facility stay. In the unlikely event you're not ready or able to return home, our case manager will help coordinate that transition. The Joint Solutions Center will always function as a complete team to aid in a safe and speedy recovery following your joint replacement. Emory Decatur Hospital sincerely appreciates your choice of the Joint Solutions Center for your total joint replacement needs. If there's anything that the staff can do to enhance or improve your time here, please do not hesitate to ask. Again, thank you for choosing us and congratulations on taking your first steps to a newer, healthier you. If you have any questions, please call our Joint Care Program Manager at 404-501-5697.